Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Psychologists tell us that approximately 10,000 thoughts pass through our minds every day. Some have more thoughts that pass through their mind, some have less. They say that your brain can hold more information than the entire Library of Congress and all 17 million volumes. Today, we wanna start a two-part mini-series called The Battlefield of the Mind, and today's topic is Civil War. Civil War. A simple definition of a civil war is this, a war between opposing groups of citizens of the same country, a state of hostility or conflict between elements within an organization. We're talking about a battlefield in your mind where you are fighting you. Can anybody attest to that? That there's this war that happens in your mind, you fighting you. You want to do something, and then you don't do it. You're going to come home, and you're going to clean the house, but a new episode on Netflix came out. Right? Say you're going to do something, but then you don't do it. Something else happens. You're tired, or you're emotional, or whatever. Right? Yes, no? I'm the only one who's got a messed up head. Okay, good. I want to tell you this today, there is a civil war going on in your mind. The battle between do you eat the chocolate donut or do you stick to your diet? Who wins? I mean, we're talking sugar and chocolate. Come on, somebody. The chocolate donut normally wins. And we're so messed up, we are. We'll cut like a little tiny piece of the chocolate donut and say, no, just a taste, just a nibble. But then go back 35 minutes later for just another little nibble. And over the next eight hours, you nibble that thing down till you had the whole donut. Right? And you excuse it like that's different. I'm preaching to me today. Check this out. In Romans 7, it says this. For my inner being, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind. There's this war going on. And it makes me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, can I just tell you, you've got to read this in context. His life wasn't over. He wasn't a miserable person. But he was being emotional because he messed up. He ate the chocolate donut when he said he wasn't going to eat it. So he's like, what a wretched man I am. I said no more donuts. But then someone brought them to work and put them on the table, right? And that's never happened to you. You've never made a promise that you're going to stop doing something. Okay, let's talk about this one. You're not going to say bad words anymore. No more swearing in the house. Oh, come on. Can we be for real? We ain't going to say bad words around the kids. We're not going to fight in front of the kids. We're not going to raise our voices in front of the kids because they need to be raised in a healthy environment. They don't need to see that kind of stuff. Let's keep that to close. And that's okay until you're the one ticked off. And then your spouse gives you the eyes like, come on, remember we promised? Oh, no. No. no, no, no." Huh? There's this war that goes on. And it's in, you know what? I blew up. I lost my cool again. What a wretched man I am. He's not a wretched man. He knows he's not a wretched man. But that's what he was feeling in the moment when this was written and put this out. That's why he says, thanks be to God. Thank you for the grace of God. Thank God that there's grace and mercy and salvation to humanity because there's this battle that we fail at all 
the time. It's the battle between good and evil in our own flesh. Remember the cartoon of the little devil on one side and the little angel on the other? Who are you going to listen to? Chocolate cake. No, salad. Chocolate cake. Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Let me ask you two scenarios, okay? First one might be somewhat easy for you. The second one, you're going to get upset, okay? Driving down the road in your car, got the music going, yellow light comes up on the street traffic light coming up. You have enough time to stop, but you're also close enough that if you step on it, you can beat the light, okay? Decision time, and this happens in the blink of an eye. Now, if you're like me, yellow light happens, the first thing you look for is their little camera. <laughs> it's a little square box like this, it'll be right next to the light, is there a camera? This happens just so fast. If there's no camera, that's a different decision. <laughs> if there is a camera, we're going to try. We're going to try to stop. We're going to try to stop. Am I the only one who looks for the camera? Oh, you know about it. All right, good. Okay. So what do you do? Do you beat the light? You know you shouldn't. You know you shouldn't. You know that yellow means caution, slow down, it's about to change. For me, it's a challenge. <laughs> oh, yeah? That, there's, a, there's a war that happens. I've got to make this decision on the fly, right? Now, it depends what kind of personality you are. If you follow the rules and this is the right thing to do, then you're going to slow down as you listen to Kenny G in your car. <laughs> if you're like me, you've got like rap or death metal on. <laughs> you're gonna, you wanna blow this, this yellow light. You wanna beat it, right? That's a simple one. That's an easy one, right? Do the right thing. Don't, don't run a red light, don't break the law. But here's one that's not so easy. You're at the mall shopping for wallets in the wallet section. You open a wallet, there's a $100 bill in the wallet. Somebody put it in there to make sure that it fit, that it's just right. What do you do? Is that your $100 bill? You know you ain't buying the wallet anyway. <laughs> You're not buying the wallet, but is that $100 bill yours? Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. The right thing to do is take it to customer service. We in New York. I forgot we're not in the South. <laughs> the right thing to do is take it to customer service and say, ma'am, sir, I found this $100 in this wallet. It is not mine. Somebody must have dropped it, left it here, put it in there. <laughs> Told you it's not an easy one. A whole bunch of thieves in here. Oh, it's easy to do the right thing when it doesn't have to do with money. Well, money changes things, doesn't it? Because you already got that $100 spent. You bought three Starbucks. <laughs> the right thing to do is take it to customer service and turn it in. The right thing. If, if we were raised by principles and standards of 30 years ago. Take that $20, that $100 bill up to the counter. I found $10. I found this $10 bill. You take that up to the counter, nine times out of 10, the customer service is gonna say, sir, there's no way that we can find out who it is. Nobody reported it, it's yours. Now you can have a clear conscience because two of you decided to steal it. <laughs> it's harder to do the right thing when it has to do with the money. 
both sides. Now, you can rationalize that all you want, why that's okay for yours to take without telling anybody. But the moment you, I gotta stand up for saying it. You do, you're making me stand up. But the moment you opened that wallet, saw it and went like this, you know, you know. Anytime you gotta look around before you pocket something, you know. Watch this, Galatians 5, 17. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict. They're in a war. They're at battle with each other. So that, watch this. So you don't do the way the thing that you want to do. You truly do want to please God. But we end up not doing that. So he says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Such a good word. So let's take a look at this for a second. We must understand that we are a three-part being. How many? Three. Three. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body, okay? You are a spirit, you have a mind, a mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a body. Your body will pass away and decay. Your spirit and your soul will live eternally, okay? We are a spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. Watch this, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, it says, may God himself the God of peace, sanctify you through and through, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once you are born again, you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your spirit man becomes alive unto God. It is influenced by the Holy Spirit. Our carnal man, or the flesh, is influenced by the things of this world. Listen, the reason why you want the chocolate donut is because you've tasted a chocolate donut before. If you never tasted a chocolate donut, you would never desire it. Once you awaken yourself to sugar, awaken yourself to chocolate, awaken yourself to McDonald's french fries, it then becomes that thing. Once you awaken yourself to sin, whatever kind it is, it could be alcohol, it could be drugs, it could be fornication, whatever that is. Your body then begins to desire these things because you awakened yourself to them. Then there's this tug. Well, remember what that felt like? Remember what that experience was like? And there's this fight. There's this fight. Ephesians 6, 12 says this though. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark age. Let me tell you this, the battle that goes on a lot in your mind, hear me please, has nothing to do with the politics that are happening in the world. You do not battle against politicians. You may battle against politicians making decisions against your will, but they're not your problem. Principalities and powers and rulers are the fight. People are not the fight. It's the spirit behind the politics. It's the spirit behind the evil that happens on whatever side you fall, fall on. You hear what I'm saying? But we want to make it someone's problem. Listen, I'm not getting political, but a president is not your problem. A president isn't. It's the agenda and the spirit behind whoever holds that office. Okay. So we got to ask this question. Who wins the fight within us? Who wins the fight? And the fight that happens within you is a lot like the trench warfare in World War I. Trench warfare in World War I. Most of that war was fought on the ground with elaborate trench systems. One army would surge forward and take more land. And then the other team would like get pushed back and they'd have to call in for more reinforcements and then they would push back. And it was just back and forth, taking land and losing land and taking land and losing land. And isn't that just like our lives? We lose 10 pounds, we gain 15. Come on, somebody. 
you guys got really loud and laughy when I talked about using dirty wordies. <laughs> so maybe you conquered using dirty wordies in your life for a long time. And then you hung out one weekend with the boys. Or you went on a trip one weekend with the girls. And one of them just has a foul mouth. And it's just so easy how quick that thing come right back on you. You sit and I feel like I'm the only one. I'm so lonely in this moment right now. <laughs> I thought I conquered this, man. Thought you conquered anger. You realize that I'm in control of my emotions. No one can make me angry. And then all of a sudden, something got you so bent. You got so angry one time. You're like, where did that come from? I thought I conquered this. And it's like five steps forward and then ten steps back. And then 10 steps forward and five steps back. And am I gaining any ground on my emotions? Thought you gained ground on depression. And you got so far, man, you made it 30 days without having a, a, a breakdown. And all of a sudden, it floods back. Come on, somebody. And this is what happens in our mind. It's like a tug of war. And I was going to show, I was going to show just a picture of the tug of war from Squid Games, but I thought that was going too far. <laughs> but there's a tug of war going on in our minds. Now listen, there are, your mind is the middleman. Your mind is the middleman. And on one side is your spirit, and on the other side is your flesh. And whichever one teams up with your mind is gonna win. If your spirit and your mind team up, it's gonna overpower the flesh. But if your flesh and your mind team up, it's going to override your spirit. It's going to do it. So I want to ask you, what is your mental diet? What are you feeding your mind? If you only feed your mind the news, CNN, Fox, Google, Yahoo, YooHoo. It's going to team up with your flesh, and you're going to be an angry person. You're going to be angry. You're going to be anxiety-driven. You're not going to know what truth is. Oh, dude, I could just drop three words right now, and we could have, like, a straight-out fist fight in here. Right? We could have a straight fist fight if I said, what is the truth about COVID and vaccines? What's the truth? Don't shout it out. Don't start it. Don't start it. <laughs> Don't start. I don't even need it on my social media feed. <laughs> we don't know. We know what each of us' personal convictions are. We can all stand our ground and, put, and exactly, and, and I don't understand why you don't see it this way, and I don't understand why you don't, whatever, right? There's a battlefield going on of confusion in our minds, in our minds. Which one are we teaming up with? And dude, we could come up with viable verses all day long for each side. Amen. All day long. Come on, somebody. Yeah. What are you feeding your mind? Can we get there? Can we go there? Can we go there? You have a bad day. You have a bad day. Stressful, bad day. Things didn't go your way. How are you dealing with that? You have a choice. You come home from work. You have a choice. How am I dealing with this? You could turn on worship music and sing yourself free. You could. 98% of people are not going to do that. But you could. But that takes work. Because tug of war to the spirit is going to take more work than tug of war to the flesh. Because you consistently give in to the flesh. You're constantly eating the chocolate donut. Now again... The chocolate donut is just representing choosing the wrong choice. Whatever your chocolate donut is. So you could turn on worship music. And you could say, Lord, I surrender this moment to you. In this weakness, in this stressful moment, in my frailty, I give it to you. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. My soul rejoice. Or you could drink three bottles of red wine. Straight, with no cup.
Might not even take the cork out. <laughs> hey! Who's going to win? Who's going to win in this moment? Come on, somebody. I'm trying to tell you, there's a choice. I've done both. I've done both. And you know what, after you finish the third bottle of red wine, the problem's still there. And then there's shame. Because I could have praised out of it. But I didn't. And my kids saw me that way. And I said things in that moment that hurt people because I was no longer in control of the words that came out of my mouth. Man, I'm... You may never be able to come back to family church again because you know that your husband got drunk, your, your pastor got drunk. <laughs> but ain't no, they, there ain't no other pastor that's going to tell you this, that's going to talk to you this way. Amen. There's no freedom at the bottom of the bottle. There's more bondage. There's more of the same behavior that gets repeated over and over and over again. Because to deal with the shame of the drunkenness, I gotta get drunk again. Who's gonna win in your life? Who's gonna win in your life? Oh shoot, I mean now, now we've legalized things to cope with emotion. Come on, can we be for real? We're talking about what's happening here, man. And what's happening here is either, am I gonna give my life to the Spirit? Which, by the way, guys, we're hoping that we're going to spend eternity with Jesus, but we don't want to spend 10 minutes now with him. <laughs> I could turn on a worship song, and I could let my spirit, a strong spirit will sustain you bodily, but a wounded spirit who can bear. A strong spirit will sustain you bodily, but a wounded spirit who can bear. A strong spirit, when the body is infirmed, will bring you out. A wounded body and a strong body can never do anything for your spirit. It never can. There's this tug of war going on. Watch this, Romans 8, 5. Those who live according to their flesh have their minds set on what that, nat that nature or the flesh desires. So if you're living out the things that you don't wanna do, you know you're doing things that are destroying your life, it's because that's what your mind is constantly thinking about. What is your mind constantly thinking about? What are you feeding your mind? I gotta tell you this, I'm writing a new book. This book is banging. It's all, like, I'm so excited about writing this book that I literally have to like pull myself away from writing because I wanna just write all night. It's awesome. I'm not telling you nothing about it. <laughs> but here's what I'm learning while writing this new book. The more creative I am, the more creative I become. That creativity is breeding creativity. That the more I'm unlocking ideas and storylines in my mind, the more ideas and storylines keep coming to my mind. To the point where I have to be like, yo, stop. St like, stop. My mind is just going now because it's unlocking the creative things that were within me. Let me tell you this. The reason why most of us get in trouble is because we're bored. Amen. We're bored. And when we're bored, we get into trouble. I'm the only one. You know why your kids act up in school? They're bored. They're bored. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you straight out. That their minds aren't being stimulated in a way. They're not creating anything. They're not building anything. We're learning. Let me not go there. It has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Boredom, right? So, so we keep leaning to do the things of the flesh because our minds are not being stimulated in a way that's creating new life. Watch this. 
because our minds are set on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's laws, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. I mean, listen, this ain't me. This is the Bible. This is the Bible. And this is talking about your thoughts. This is just talking about what's going on in your brain. Watch this. Colossians 3.1. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your minds or heart on things above. All right, I'm about to age myself. Anybody in here 40 or older? Okay. So you remember TVs. They had two knobs on them. The top knob was U, UHF, and the bottom knob was VHF, right? And then before we had cable, we had these two little antennas on top, right? Huh? The rabbit ears, yeah. So back then, we, we didn't have like the high-end bougie TV, so we didn't have a remote. Your boy was the remote. So anytime mom and dad want the channel change, Mike, change the channel. And you have to jump up, and then there was a knob within a knob. So the UHF had a knob, but then it had like a little tuning dial, like kind of built into it. And if that wasn't enough, then you had to move the antennas to get the signal just right. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but I've always had a vivid imagination. And if I had bad dreams, my mom would come into my room, and she'd be like, Michael, what's wrong? I said, I'm having a bad dream. And she said, okay, Michael, reach your hand out and change the channel. So the channel was a circular thing, and it had like a, a line in the middle, like a knob, like a, a stove knob, and you had to turn it. Click, 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 click. 13 of them, right? And so she'd say, change the channel in your mind. Just like watching TV, change the channel. You don't like the show that's going on in your mind, change it to a new channel. And so I would always change the channel to dirt bike riding over jumps out in, the, out in the woods. Like, that was my thing. Like, put me in nature, put me on a dirt bike. <laughs> Michael, Michael, motorcycle, you know. <laughs> That's where I would go. I'd go into that happy place, happy Gilmore, right? I'd go into my happy place, change my thinking, click the channel. And so I was raising my kids. Kids have that vivid imagination. So I say, what's wrong? I had a bad dream. I said, okay, reach your hand out, change the channel. And they would do it, okay? And one day, my daughter said, Daddy, I get the idea of changing the channel, but why am I doing this? I said, okay, honey, in your mind, take out your cell phone and swipe up. <laughs> swipe up. Can I tell you something today? You have the power to change what you're thinking about. You have the power to change what you're thinking about. Your thoughts don't control you. You control your thoughts. If it were not so, Paul would not tell us, set your mind on things above. Set your mind. Set it to the channel of things above. If we could not do it, it would not be in the Bible. You absolutely have power over your thoughts. The Bible says take every thought captive and make it come into subjection to the word of God. You have the power to do that. Are thoughts strong? Yes. But when that anxiety comes, when that depression comes, you're choosing whether to stay in that moment or not. <laughs> you're choosing. You know what you're thinking about when that thing hits? My chest is tight. <sighs> Can't breathe. Wonder if this happens. But what if this happens? But what if this happens? What if somebody finds out? What if they know? 
Instead of changing the channel, if God is for me, who can be against me? What shall man do unto me? You are the strength of my life. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. You will keep me in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Great is my peace and my undisturbed composure. What is your mind set to? You change the channel. Are you going to change it to something that is godly? Are you going to change it to something that is wholesome? Are you going to change it to something that the word of God is standing true on? Or are you going to turn it to the flesh? Listen, everything that, every single action that you've done that you are ashamed of did not just happen. You thought about it first. You thought about it first. You pondered it. It went through your mind, and then you made a decision. Every single thing, every single time. We can say, well, it's just impulsive. That's not really true. That's not really true. You thought about it even in the impulse. Even in that moment where the light turns yellow and I'm driving, I still have to think, what am I choosing to do in this moment? Am I going to lean to what's right or am I going to lean into pleasure? Am I going to lean into what my flesh desires or am I going to set my mind on things above? Proverbs 23, 7 tells us this. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a woman thinks in her heart, so is she. What do you think about yourself? Are you a winner or are you a loser? Are you more than a conqueror or are you a failure? You need to answer that question for yourself. Are you winning at life or are you failing at life? What do you think about yourself because if all you think about is shame if all you think about is guilt if all you think about is your failure you've arrived but if you can do what Paul says and put things behind you change your thinking and your vision and press towards the mark for the prize of the high call I am blessed and highly favored of the Lord Everything I set my hands to will prosper and be successful. I'm blessed in the city and in the field. Everywhere my feet walk are blessed. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. I deserve a promotion. What do you believe about yourself? Come on, this ain't some self-help. This is Bible. The Bible says that he created us to be kings and priests in this life. This life, now, kings and priests today. Why are you living a life far below king and priest? Because it's easy. Yeah, it's easier. But it's not fulfilling. It's not fulfilling. We got to get the mind right. We got to get our minds right. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You know what that means? That it has to go through the mind to get into the spirit faith, that is. Because faith comes by hearing. If the filter's clogged, if the filter's junked up, then what we're hearing is not going to bring about faith. Those of you dealing with hearing problems, that's an attack on your faith. Woo, you ain't never heard that one before. If you got hearing problems, it's an attack on your faith because that's how faith comes, through your hearing. We got to get that hearing fixed so we can get the faith fixed. We got to get the mind unclogged so we can live by faith and not by our senses, by sight. Listen, man. I want to close out with this scripture in James 1.13. When tempted, because temptation's going to come, chocolate donuts are going to get dropped on the table at work, in the common area, when you said no more donuts, right? Someone's gonna have a bad day at work and they're gonna let their foul mouth go and you've already conquered that. Donuts are gonna come. Temptation comes. Come on, somebody. When tempted, when a temptation comes, no one should say, God is tempting me. 
for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Listen, this is a fact. This is a fact. This is not just a Bible verse. This is not just philosophy or theology. This is a fact. God is good. If God is good, he cannot tempt with evil because that would void the fact of him being good. Okay, so when you have a temptation going on, God, what's the purpose in this? You're being tempted. The devil's trying to snuff you out. Okay, but each one is tempted when he is by his, oh, I'm sorry, but each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Most of the temptations that happen is us. You know what the chocolate donut tastes like, and you want another one. Huh? You have an appetite for it. You have an appetite for it. Some of you have a strong appetite for alcohol. Some have a strong appetite for drugs. An appetite for the wrong things on the internet. An appetite for, for harsh and violent video games and movies. Things that are not going to feed our spirits. They're not going to feed our spirits. Now, I'm not saying any of this to shame. I'm saying this to an encouragement that there's a better way. There's a better way. There's a life of peace. There's a life that's going to bring joy. That's going to that's going to combat the anger for you when you feed your spirit the right things. It says this, desire the things above what God has set before us. I want to tell you this today. You are in control of your thought life. Please do not believe the lie that you cannot overcome those thoughts. Don't believe that lie. Do not believe that lie. You can. Now listen, I will tell you this, in all transparency, there's some people who need to see a counselor. There's some people who need to see a doctor. There may be some people that need medication to help them. Listen to what I'm saying here. I'm not anti any of that. But if you haven't prayed first, you're already putting yourself at a negative. You cannot live a positive life with a negative mind. You cannot live a positive life with a negative mind. Next week, we're going to complete this little mini-series. Next month, November, we're going to do a series on worship. Now, if you're not into music, don't worry. We're not going to do three hours of singing. But we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about... In this kind of moment, like if I was having a bad day, how can I turn on something? What can I do in and of myself and in my relationship with God to pull myself out of funky moments? We're going to talk about what do we do corporately when the words disappear from the screen and the people on stage are singing stuff weird that we don't know what they're singing. What do we do? Like, what is worship? We're going to break that down. Pastor Chris and I, uh, we're going to do some interactive stuff. We're gonna talk about the seven postures of worship. We're gonna demonstrate some stuff. We're gonna have a good time with that. But next week, we're gonna finalize this, this talk about the mind. If you have a friend or a loved one that could benefit from a talk about emotions and negative thoughts, invite them next week, okay? Invite them next week. And, and simply say, hey, would you be interested my church is doing a series on the battlefield of the mind. Pastor is a psych major. He's got some cool stuff that he wants to go. Would you, would you go with me to church? Something like that. Real, I promise you, we won't do anything cringy. All right? It won't be a cringy service. It won't be anything hyper weird that you'd be embarrassed to bring somebody to. But I truly believe next week, I will give you guys some tools that if you have a friend that needs help with their emotions or their thought life, it will absolutely help them and set them free, all right? If you have a spouse that's not a church person, but you think that a conversation about how to communicate in a marriage in a healthy manner could help, bring them next week. Bring them next week. Non-church people, right? It, it, it won't be weird where like a non-church person could come, okay? We are gonna sing some songs, but we won't get weird. Is that okay? <laughs> Father, we come to the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you today. 
that you could speak life to us, that you could give us tools to overcome the thought life, that we would not need any other substance than the substance of the Holy Spirit to deal and cope with this life. I thank you that joy would be familiar in our homes. Peace would be familiar in our homes. That we could raise our children in a life-giving way. That they would bring that life to their families as they grow older. Lord, as we leave here today, I pray that great is our peace and our undisturbed composure. You will keep us in perfect peace as our mind is stayed on you. I think that we are blessed coming in. We'll be blessed going out. Everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at familychurchny.com to get started today.